Hey guys, Kiwi here. In this video, I'll be breaking down and analyzing the newest issue of The Walking Dead Comics, issue 176, New World Order, part 2 of 6. With that being said, major warning of spoilers, and let's jump right into it. Alright, so we pick up exactly where we left off at the end of issue 175. Michonne grabs the photo of her and she demands that Lance takes her to the bakery immediately. Now, I've discussed this in previous videos, but Lance has become very jaded to the entire process of introducing people to his community, along with reunions or anything else to go along with it. He has a protocol to follow, and he has patience as well, and anything else is just an unnecessary distraction. It's not like Lance doesn't want Michonne to be reunited with her daughter or anything, he just doesn't seem to feel much sympathy towards her, he almost just rolls his eyes. He states that the photo was put up a long time ago and that the daughter could be anywhere by now considering the common size wealth of 50,000 people. So although Michonne grabs Lance in anger of him not immediately complying, she is still smart enough to restrain herself as she realizes that while well, complying with him and following through with the initiation process is the best way to get what she wants. And so as they walk through the town to meet the governor of the commonwealth, we get two double page images. The first is of them walking through a neighborhood completely empty, but the second image shows them walking through a marketplace. It honestly kind of looks somewhat like Woodbury, but with a huge market down the street. It's really awesome to see a new community thriving like this and actually have it be legit and not just a facade, like Terminus for example. Now this is where we get the full introduction of Stephanie, along with the confirmation that our assumptions about her were correct. She waves Eugene down from in the crowd, and he leaps off his horse to greet her. Lance intervenes, however, and completely snaps at Stephanie, as she was apparently talked to beforehand and he mentions that she should know better. Now, she says something that is similar to what a Commonwealth soldier told Michonne last issue. Stephanie implies that the Commonwealth has its flaws, but she's glad to have Eugene here. Now, Stephanie tells Lance that she just wanted Eugene's group to further trust them, but Lance yells at her more, threatening to demote her job assignment, along with possibly revisiting her punishment, whatever that was. Anyways, the confirmation here is that Stephanie wasn't authorized to use the radio, which is why she seems so nervous to speak with Eugene and introduce him to her community, and also why she wasn't there to meet him in the first place at the meeting area. Anyways, Michonne seems a bit taken back by Lance's authoritative side coming out, but I bet Eugene wasn't too terribly happy himself. He probably didn't want to get Stephanie in any sort of trouble or any more trouble, so he just complied and nothing more was said from him. As we go to the next page, Lance introduces them all to a middleman of some sorts named Maxwell Hawkins. He asks everyone what their pre-apocalypse job was, and I love how quickly he skips over the princess the same way that Lance did during their original meeting. He's still polite, but he kind of cuts her off and moves on to the next person, and that's all we get. Anyways, we get confirmation that Eugene was a high school science teacher. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that this is the first time that we've really heard of this actual pre-apocalypse occupation, and I found it quite funny and interesting. I mean, we know that he wasn't an actual, like, scientist that knew the cure to the virus, but... He actually kind of was a scientist since he was a science teacher, I mean it makes sense as to why he knows about science and that sort of geeky nerdy stuff, but I don't know, I just found that really intriguing. Now, when Michonne explains that she was a lawyer, um, the guy says that it'll do and he brings her to the main woman on the cover of the issue. She introduces herself as Pamela Milton, the governor of the commonwealth. Now, I get that the governor is a common word, but I wish that they could have chose a different title for her. Michonne has had a horrible history with governors, especially in the comics as he actually raped her, so I thought, oh boy, when I heard her say that. Now, she introduces herself in kind of a pretentious way, almost as if she expected Michonne to, like, freak out and start kissing her feet. We're what you've been dreaming of, what you hoped still existed. Simply put, we're civilization, it's back, you're welcome. And then as Michonne just blindly stares at her, she blankly stares back, like, okay there, what are you, a deer in headlights? Now, I can imagine situations where she's welcomed desperate people who have had a terrible go at the apocalypse, but Michonne has been fairly well off with Rick's group. Now, I imagine a bunch of people previously jumping for joy in front of Pamela, like, a, as if they'd won the lottery, but Michonne explains how she's actually auditioning Pamela as much as Pamela is auditioning her. 
I just can't get over that hilarious smirk on Michonne's face as she says, am I supposed to say thank you? Because I kind of agree to some extent. As far as I'm aware, Pamela just automatically assumed that Michonne would be begging to join the Commonwealth. I understand that most people just want to be led into a safe community, especially if they were out on the road for a long time, but it was a bit off-putting to just assume that Michonne would want to move on in. And then the way she responds definitely made me raise an eyebrow. She literally says, if you have any interest whatsoever in being polite, yes, in response to Michonne's should I say thank you. Like what a passive aggressive thing to say with a smile on your face. But whatever, Michonne handles the situation well and I'm very happy with the way that she's acted this entire issue. Meanwhile, we're shown the rest of Eugene's group waiting outside with Lance, and a group of tired Commonwealth soldiers walk by. After a few speech bubbles, you soon realize that they're the same soldiers that Lance left to take out the Magenta Swarm in the last issue. I'm glad that they followed up on this and actually showed the soldiers returning, as it was entirely possible for them to just never touch on it again and just leave us to assume that they made it back alright. I was also slightly concerned for them, so it's nice to see a conclusion to it. I also enjoy how they brought up the Magenta Swarm as a casual way of explaining what they just finished doing along with reminding us of who they were, just exposition really. And we get a sneak peek of Officer Mercer, who will most likely be introduced next issue considering he's on the cover of it. The soldier says, Mercer is going to shit when he hears he missed out on the Magenta Swarm, he loves killing swarms. So immediately I just thought back to Abraham smiling on the TV show as he kills zombies in seasons 4 and 5 but that's just me. I'll get more into my opinions of Mercer in a future prediction video for issue 177, so be sure to look out for that as well. Anyways, back to Michonne's conversation with the Commonwealth's governor. She gives Michonne two full pages of dialogue, pretty much explaining that civilization is a big machine. This explains her viewpoint and how she sees her community, along with how she systematically puts people in proper places in order to have it function properly. And honestly, I got so into this dialogue and what she was saying, when she says chaos, I was honestly hoping for Michonne to just turn and say, chaos is a ladder. I mean, it's probably good she didn't because it would have been a total ripoff of Game of Thrones, not to mention that her character is entirely different from Littlefinger, but my mind just couldn't help but jump to it. Anyways, as Michonne has finally had enough introductions, she's just itching to find her daughter and who can blame her. It's not like this is the first time Michonne has done anything like this either, Michonne has been through an interview like this before when she first got to Alexandria, and although that may be, this does feel different as I have different thoughts and questions running through my head, especially since the viewers are all waiting to get an answer just as much as Michonne is. So as Michonne finally snaps and explains to Pamela that her daughter is somewhere in the Commonwealth, Pamela instantly shows sympathy and respect as she is stunned at the level of restraint that Michonne has been showing. She is a mother herself and so she could only imagine how Michonne feels and she quickly states that they're going to find her daughter right now. I feel like this was definitely meant to give the viewers a moment where we all say, thank god, finally, but it definitely worked. So right as I was thinking this to myself, I give myself a sigh of relief as we'll learn more about whether Michonne's daughter is still alive or not. Not only that, but that question was immediately answered as soon as I flipped the page because Michonne's daughter was the first thing I saw. They both stare at each other, Michonne smiles, and her daughter literally drops the cake that she just made. The final image of the issue shows Michonne hugging her daughter in the bakery and no words are even need to be said. This moment was just so extremely touching, and it's already easily made me love Michonne's backstory like 10 times more now. I love how the Commonwealth seems to be bringing out everyone's original character traits. I hope that we get to see this with more characters in the future like let's say Eugene, but for now I'm happy to see where this is going with Michonne. Once again, be sure to check out my prediction video for issue 177 for more on my opinions about how this will play out with her daughter, but for now let me know how you guys feel about issue 176 in the comments below. Although I've been wanting to see the answer to whether or not Michonne will be reunited with her daughter, I was also very interested in everything else going on this issue. We get to see the inside of the Commonwealth, involving a huge marketplace, the official introduction of Stephanie. I was also very interested in everything Pamela had to say, even though I wanted to know more about Michonne's daughter the entire time. In my opinion, they did the perfect amount of making us wait as they quickly explain more about the Commonwealth and who the leader is. They delayed it enough to make me want 
want to know even more, but we still got the payoff at the end of the issue, so I wasn't annoyed by it. I was satisfied as fuck when I finished reading this issue, and I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I did. It's honestly one of my favorites. What did you guys think about New World Order Part 2 with 6? I think the story arc is working up to be pretty great, and I hope it continues to pay off. Leave any opinions or predictions down below. Well, that's pretty much it for the video, guys. I'd appreciate a like on the video if you've enjoyed anything I've said today, or even subscribe for more Walking Dead content in the near future. And if you'd like to take that extra step in helping support my videos, consider checking out my Patreon where there's a bunch of different rewards involving the channel, such as a chance to directly influence the videos being produced. It isn't necessary by any means, but it could really help in the long run. And as always, I thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.